but Fran Mendes, the creator of Async API. Hello, Fran. How are you? Hey, Arnold. How are you doing, man? I'm, I'm good fine. Here. Thank you. Uh, so you have uh, 50 minutes slots, and uh, you have a lot of time to talk about what you want. We can have a Q&A session. I think that people may have a lot of questions about what is happening <laughs> to Async API. So share your screen. So yeah, start. we were just uh, chatting before, just so people know that uh, I'm happy to leave a lot of time for questions at the end of the of the presentation. So yeah, so yeah. So we have until and... twenty past four. So I think we have a huge amount of time to talk about everything. So now the stage is yours. We are listening to you, Fran. Thank you. Okay. So let me just get started with everything here. Cool. So yeah, my name is Fran Mendez. I'm the creator of uh, Async API. And um, yeah, um, I got asked to to come to or, or to speak at Async API, uh, at Async API days, maybe one day. Uh, at API days, uh, Paris, um, to give it to be, give a little bit of a status update about uh, async api and um so here we are right um you can follow me on on, on twitter um send me an email or follow me on linkedin i'm happy to uh, answer any questions you may have so so yeah feel free um if you've been following async api news lately i'm sure you uh you've seen this announcement that we did with a lot of lots of uh, uh, creating a lot of interest uh, in the community, right? Like, uh, what's what's what the hell is happening at Async KPI? Everybody was curious, right? Um, so that's what's happening. Um, Async KPI is partnering with Postman, and um, the reason we are um, doing this partnership is precisely to take uh, to take async api to a whole new level but uh what does it mean right so so far we've been accepting uh or relying on a on a um, sponsorship model where um uh, where companies cool companies and people could sponsor um could sponsor async api so we could make it uh, a sustainable initiative right However, um, it was good, and, and, and we are. Uh, it was good, and, and we are happy that we got a lot of uh, like really good sponsors uh, that uh, we're always um, happy to 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 mention them, and and, and we're, we're grateful for them, right? But the problem is that we are facing a huge challenge here. So think about in terms of um comparing to for instance open api or graphql uh graphql or and either graphql open api they only have only have to solve a problem with one kind of api right like rest apis or graphql apis it's just a single protocol in the case of uh in the case of graphql the schema is always the same one in the case of open api the schema is is always the same one uh, so the only moving pieces that you have in these cases is um, you want to you want to have you want to create REST APIs in in different in different uh, programming languages, and you want to generate documentation and you want to design uh, your your API upfront. So so your um, services so like API gateways. Uh, understand how how your API should should behave, uh, and that's fine. That's a, a lot of complexity. But now with this in KPI, we were facing a different challenge, which is aside from that, we had to add that we have not just HTTP, but we had multiple protocols. So that's that makes things a little bit uh, exponential, right? So if you if you take a quick calculation, uh, if you have to do HTTP on each language. Uh, that's like a one um, one dimension, I would say. But then, if you add MQTT or WebSocket, it's another dimension, and another, and another, and another. So it multiplies by um, 
the number of protocols in this case. But on top of that, uh, on the messaging world, you had um, you had a JSON schema, you had Avro, Protobuf, or, yeah, Protobuf. Um, so what happens is that, mm, yeah, we could not ignore them. So people are already working with Avro, specifically Avro for, uh, for the Kafka um, environment or the Kafka world. Uh, it's very common. So yeah, I guess you, you understand that this is a huge challenge and this is not something that two or three uh, people working full time can actually handle, right? It's, it's too much, it's too much. So we either needed two uh, solutions here. Uh, we either get more sponsors, <laughs> right? So that uh, that could be uh, an option. Um, well, actually three, or we or we increase the 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 the, the, um, the tiers of the sponsorship, but that's up to the sponsors to pay more, of course. So that's not a guarantee that this is going to happen. And uh, and the other option is that we look for an alternative solution. Like we get the money from an alternative solution to hire more people, right? Uh, at first, we considered. Um, at first, we consider like uh, okay, so let's just uh, create a startup, sell some services around async API, and then we look for investment, and that investment will be uh, will be used for that product and to maintain uh, all the. Um, all the async API, uh, uh, async API initiative projects, right, including the spec. So, so that was that was one idea. We were not happy with this idea 100% for two reasons. One reason is that we're not here to make business. So, if you know me from before, uh, I'm sure you heard me lots of time to say that I'm not a businessman. I'm an engineer who happened to be wearing the businessman hat sometimes and uh, I'm not liking it uh, fully like sometimes I like it but I don't like to I, I will not like to dedicate my life to this right I prefer to keep doing what I do which is engineering right and um, and yeah so that's uh, so 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 that, that the, the thing is that uh, we we could do this right we could we could actually ask for uh, for money to investors, and uh, and yeah, sorry, and and I, I forget about the other point. So, and the other the other reason we didn't want to go in this direction is that um, the moment uh, you ask for investment, you get a debt with people who might probably don't care. And sorry for the expression, but they don't care shit about this in KPI or your or the development experience or developers are always just making money. They give you money to get more money in return. And that's it. So uh, that's uh, some somehow that compromises the project. Um, so yeah, so having some different conversations with uh, different people, including in this case Kim Lane, uh, he he introduced me to Abinab uh, at Postman, and uh, and we started discussing the possibility to have a partnership, because yeah, as as some of you already know, maybe. Um, Postman is uh, looking to have like like multi protocol strategy, so you can use Postman in with different protocols, not just uh, REST APIs or request response APIs, um, but yeah, or, or GraphQL APIs in this case. But to to have a more diverse a API toolbox, um, that's how uh, that's what Keynes call it. So so yeah, and uh, it seemed like super aligned to us like uh so the only things that uh, i want to clarify here since the announcement i got a bunch of questions like we announced it two days ago and we got, i got a lot of questions uh, on on my email on my linkedin on private messages uh people were worried which is normal uh but in general the 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 reception was was good and uh, i want to just clarify some things um about what it means that we are that we are partnering with with Postman here. So first of all, is the way it's 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 done. It, it, we're doing this is we're joining we're joining Postman. Uh, I am joining Postman. Lucas is joining Postman. 
and Jonah is Magic, who are the two uh, biggest contributor to the project uh, right now, um, are joining Postman as well <coughs> to work full time on async API, right? And uh, that's uh, so that's that's the idea. Whatever we contribute to async KPI is not uh, a Postman property; is an async KPI property, and that's why uh, we want to make. Uh, this is one of the reasons we want to make async API or we want to host async KPI in a foundation in a neutral ground, right? So, so that's a that that is, uh, it's something that I wanted to clarify. So, for those wondering if it's a if it's an acquisition, it is not an acquisition. Abinab and I discussed very long about it. Uh, like neither of us wanted this to be an acquisition, and uh, because that will probably damage the whole project at all. Uh, at the whole the whole project right the, the, this will damage the whole project and uh we were aligned there like we need to be careful with what we do here because that's an open source project this needs to be a standard we want this to be a, to be a standard so this cannot be seen as it's controlled by postman right and that's the last thing that we want to do so this is a message that i want to send from here like uh both Abinab, Postman, uh, and us, we're aligned here uh, that um, this is not where it will happen. And um, for that reason, that takes me to my to my next point, which is uh, we're going to host in the first quarter of uh, 2021, we're going to host uh, the project into a, a neutral foundation, if you want to call it like this. So what does it mean? What does it mean that uh, we're hosting the project into uh, in, in a foundation? So it means that, uh, or what, what is this kind of foundations, right? So I mean, for instance, something like Linux Foundation, CNCF, Apache Foundation. Uh, there are lots, right? I'm sure you know a lot. So we're now exploring different options, and we want to we want to make sure that we go to the right place, and. Um, and the reason we want to we want to do that is that we want to keep working with freedom and independence, freedom and independence not just of Postman, but from any company, right? Uh, we we welcome companies to join the effort. We just don't want companies to manipulate or control the async API direction, right? It's okay to contribute. It's okay to give your voice. It's okay to come with your use cases uh, at your company with for your customers. That's fine, but the last thing that we want here is that companies control the direction of the project, or even worse, they block the project, or also it doesn't move, uh, or they don't do anything. There. So, as as Keen said the other day, is like inaction sometimes is even worse, right? So, so we want to prevent these things, and um, so yeah, this is this is one of the the, the biggest reasons. For that, we still have to we still have to. Um, Come up with uh, with a model, with a governance uh, governance model. Uh, but what we have clear here is that we want to uh, encourage companies as well as individuals to join the initiative. Um, and when we say to join, is for instance to make decisions. So who's gonna so things like who's gonna have a vote. <clears throat> Sorry, who's gonna get a vote, uh, or who's gonna have a vote when taking decisions? So these are things that we have to decide, right? And how we're gonna make these decisions and 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 all of that, right? So we want to make sure that whatever we decide, uh, individuals are as, um, or we encourage individuals to to join to uh, to async API initiative as much as companies right so uh in, in other words i want to explain it in other words is that we don't want companies to pay for the boat right so some companies just come come here and say like uh, imagine that that situation where they they come here and say like i want to pay uh so i have a seat on the board and so i can decide the direction of the project right i can vote for it so this is something that we want to prevent right because that's effectively that's buying your boat and what what that makes is that uh, only the ones with more money will win. So 
that's not fair. So we have we've seen so far how we've been uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, great progress with lots of contributors, and uh, none of them were putting a single uh, a single euro or a single dollar. They were they were putting a lot of effort, a lot of their time, and they were mostly individuals. And in, in most of the cases, I'm not saying that companies are not uh, putting uh, also time uh, from their employees. Of course, they are. Like a huge shout out from here to Solas, uh, so Solas folks who are dedicating like a lot of effort uh, to to spread the word about async KPI, but also to develop code generators. So and 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 also, for instance, MuleSoft has been dedicating. Um, and, and, and is dedicating engineers to develop the, the parsers, right, for Java and, and, and JavaScript. So, so yeah, what I'm saying is that we need to give equal opportunity to individuals and, and, and companies here, not just because you have money, you can buy your vote. So, so yeah. And um, we want to we want to do this for the for the same reason that you probably. <clears throat> Sorry, for the same reason you want to have a diverse team on your company, right? Like you want to have, you want to make sure that you have as many points of view as possible uh, in your team and in your company. And we we want to do the same thing. Like we want to be as as diverse as possible, and uh, and we want to to make sure that the roadmap is decided uh, is. The roadmap, the, the roadmap is decided um, based on the on the um, on the feedback that we get from our users, right? Or from the research that we do with our users. So we want to be user driven in this case, right? So, so yeah, that's a uh, like uh, so far. Uh, that what I wanted to clarify here is that um, that yeah that. Async KPI initiative continues its its roadmap, its road. Uh, this time with the help of Postman, of course, which makes things a, little, uh, a lot easier, right? Basically, because we don't have to be worrying all day about every single um, euro or dollar, right, to make it happen. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's something that. Uh, we actually uh, we actually like a lot, right? Um, so yeah. Um, also, would love to um, to mention uh, and and give a shout out to this to this guy. So I mean, I'm sure you already know Lucas, and if you don't know Lucas, you have to uh, you have to meet him. Uh, <laughs> he's a I would say he's the in KPI guy. He's been he's been basically driving async kpi for almost the whole year uh with almost no help from my side like while i, I was worried about uh coming up with a deal like this he was just driving uh, async kpi almost himself along so like huge shout out and, and, and you know an applause for him um and yeah he's a, he's the async kpi guy actually and um and Jonas and Macek are joining now, but uh, they're not new for us. So Jonas has been a, 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 a great contributor of Async KPI, probably the biggest contributor of Async KPI. And um, so we had to hire this, this great guy, right? Like we couldn't uh, leave him, uh, we couldn't let him escape, right? So uh, we caught him and it's like, no, you're gonna work with us, man, uh, whatever it takes. And um, so yeah, we're happy that he's he's joining as well. And uh, and Matic, if you've been if you've been using uh, Async API with React, he's uh, he's the author of the Async API React component, where you can render uh, React uh, Async API documentation in a, with a React component. So so yeah, this this has been a huge contribution and something that uh, we want to invest more in the future. So it made total sense to have him on the team as well, and 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 encourage him to to be contributing even more, right? So so yeah, super happy uh, to have them on board. Uh, just to to clarify a little bit more here, I want to make sure that everybody is aligned here. 
it says there, as you can see, that we're joining Postman to work full time on Async API. This is a team at Postman, right? So I want to I want to keep encouraging. Uh, I want to keep encouraging people um, to um, to join to join the the the, the Async API initiative, like or to partner with the Async API initiative, like Postman did, right? At some point. Uh, at some point, what we what we want to happen here on Async API Initiative is we want to have um, we want to have the the the, the Postman team or the, the yeah the Postman team working on Async API, but we want to have the the, the Solas team, for instance, working on Async API and and MuleSoft and blah 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 whatever, and your company uh, dedicating at least one person uh, to work full time on Async API. This is even more valuable than all the money that you could you could give us. So if you can uh, if you can come to us and say like, hey, uh, I don't have the money, maybe you don't have the money, uh, but I have time, right? And this can be your company or this can be yourself. You are uh, self-employed, and uh, and you just want to dedicate to work full time uh, on on async KPI, right? So I understand that as an individual, this is. More complicated, but uh, but as a company, I think this this will be a even better contribution. And uh, together, we'll form the Async API team, right? The Async API initiative team. So this is just to uh, differentiate from uh, the team at Postman, uh, which should be a huge team. It's going to be a huge team uh, because Postman decided to invest a lot of it on Async API. But we want everyone to uh, to join us and and to join Postman as well. To drive this forward, right? So we welcome uh, more partnerships, of course. Um, so what are we looking for here? Um, we are we are hiring. So who who are we here? In this in this case, I'm I'm going to talk about Postman and the team that we're going to build at Postman. Uh, we're we're going to be hiring on the next uh, uh, six months. It's already December, so six months. Uh, in the next six, mo six months, we're going to be hiring a lot of people, lots of people. So uh, we're going to be looking for UI, UX, uh, DX designers, so someone who was, was really passionate about user experience and, uh, and building a great user experience, not just in the browser, but also, sorry, also on the CLI. And, uh, you know, lots of engineers, we mainly, we're going to be mainly uh focusing on 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 go on golang on on, on node.js and building uh building the which is the future of the the future of the of the project right and like lots of code generators um there will be like uh, lots of tools to work on or to author uh new async api documents with simple like clicks right so you don't have to learn the, the spec and um and also some kind of API gateway or API proxy if you want for events, right? So the same functionality that we have right now on API gateways for HTTP APIs, uh, we want to have something similar for multiple protocols uh, and, to, and to have the ability to, to, to handle and or to manage this type of APIs, right? Uh, either it's Kafka, WebSockets or, or whatever, or MQTT, whatever. Of course, we want to have best-in-class uh, documentation and uh, for, for async KPIs. So we're going to be higher on technical writing and, and, and more. Of course, I don't want to spend a lot of time here. Sorry. Um, this uh, this this whole thing that we're facing right now, I see it as a, an opportunity for us. But because we we're coming from the the other side of having nothing like having zero income uh, on async api and and being myself on my spare time working on it uh on the afternoons and weekends um we want to share we want to share this so let me tell you a little bit more about what i mean by uh sharing here so at async api we're already we're already doing that we're already working on, on cycles of six weeks, right? 
Uh, I'm sure if if you heard the uh, shape up the shape up model, uh, I'm, you probably heard about it. It's uh, I recommend that you have a look at it. But independently of this, uh, we work on on on, on six week cycle. And uh, after the six week cycle, what happens? What comes next? Um, some people will say like a, another cycle, right? Uh, well, no. <laughs> after the six week cycle, what we decide to do is that we take like two weeks uh, cool uh, cool down period. It's, it's that's its name, right? Cool down period. What do we do in this cool down period? So. All, all the all the people working at the company at the company at the, in this case at the initiative right during this cool uh, there is this cool down period will uh, be allowed to work on whatever they want and uh, take whatever issues they prefer like they want to fix it back here and there uh, because yeah they don't like this or there is something that is bugging them a lot uh, and they want to fix it. They want to propose a new feature, and if it's uh, accepted and community likes it, why not? That's just implemented. If you have time in these two weeks, that's fine. But uh, but furthermore, what I want to uh, encourage here, people, is that we dedicate these two weeks to to share to other projects, to other open source projects. Independently, we it's a dependency of us or not. So, for instance, uh, during this two weeks uh, period. We want uh, we want to be contributing to, for instance, AJV, which is a, a JSON schema parser on on, on Node.js, uh, or JSON schema contributing to JSON schema itself will be great, uh, and contributing to other open source projects. In this case, these are these are pro projects we depend on, but it's not mandatory. So we want to give back to the community, to the global and the whole community. And uh, we want also to encourage our engineers uh, working on async API to develop their own open source tools if they feel there's some opportunity for this. So you have, instead of having one Friday every every two weeks or every four weeks, uh, you will have two weeks in a row to work on something meaningful on something you like. And uh, and yeah, so that's uh, I think that's will that's will um, that's will do a lot, right? Also, together with Postman, what we're gonna do here is that we want to expand this to other initiatives. So we want to we want to expand this to other uh, open source projects, and not just contribute with code or with design or with issue triaging or or, or anything, but with money, right? So sometimes people just need money. They just need to be able to leave their jobs and start working on, on the open source project. Or people just need to get paid for this because yeah, not everybody is well paid. So um, so an, an extra cash will be great uh, sometimes for, for some contributors. So so yeah, so this is something that we are we want uh, also to expand on, right? Um, as you can imagine. The technology that we want to be working here is is, is bleeding edge, right? Is something in many cases it's it's a kind of technology that we does we still don't know how we're gonna implement it. It's so bleeding edge that uh, some people some people are asking for that, but some other people are like they don't even thought that this will be possible or this could be an option. So so yeah, we will be like exploring a lot, uh, building things that the community uh, will love and building things that the community might not love at all. And then we'll have to trust them. But this, this is something that we'll, uh, we'll be dedicating, we'll be, we'll be um, in constant co uh, communication with the community and, uh, and with uh, the rest of the, of, the, of the companies, right? So, just to mention, um, just to mention a few things that we want to we want to do this uh, uh, working on this team is we want to solve some common problems that we've been having on on async API, of course, which is we want to have like a fixed spec uh, release cadence 
So for instance, I'm just inventing the the the, the dates here, but uh, or the ranges. But uh, so imagine that we decide that every six months we release a new version of the spec. This is our uh, this is our bet. Like we bet that every six months we're gonna have a, a new version of the spec, whatever it is, whatever it includes. That day there there's gonna be a new release uh, with whatever it has it has. Uh, it's a minor release. It's probably a patch release, or it's a major release. We don't know, uh, depending on the content, right? So we want to to have a team constantly working on the spec, at the same time that we have a team, a bigger team, most probably, uh, working on the on the tooling to support that spec, right? And all the previous spec versions, so we don't uh, leave anyone uh, outside. CLI tools to to create. Um, to create async API documents, this is super important. To create async API documents, to um, to generate um, to generate documentation, to generate code, to validate async API documents, so you can use the CLI in your CI systems and make sure that whatever you're pass you're you're pushing on your Git repo uh, has the has the right content, right? So the the, the document is actually valid. Um, we want to invest more on the on the UI library, so having the React component, but not as a single uh, mono, monolithic component, but split into smaller components. So you probably want to use a specific part of your documentation in your website. Uh, you could do that, right? You don't need to embed the whole the whole website. So we want to keep investing there. Of course, we want to make it look beautiful. And for that, we need a designer, right? Uh, we tried, we tried hard, but this is not, uh, we're not designers. So I think it's not that bad for being developers, but uh, but yeah, this time we need someone who really knows what, uh, what they're doing. <laughs> so yeah. And um, we also want to uh, create a uh, async KPI studio. Uh, some people might already have seen that we have something called async KPI Hub. Will be kind of similar. For those who don't know, it's like a playground, like uh, it's like a playground on SRAs. So you have, you will have a UI to to author um, uh, async API documents. But um, even more than that, I will say that you will have a UI to create your or to design your event-driven architectures, and async API will be uh, like uh, on the on the background, right? Like it will generate async API documents, but that's not the purpose of the tool. The, the purpose of the tool is to is to aid you, is to assist you with the creation or with the design of event-driven architectures. And that's what we want to, to do. Um, and yeah, basically um, investing on this, invest, investing on, on, on in lots of interactive documentation, uh, like I said before, and this is for real, we want to have a a award a, a award winning award winning uh, documentation, and we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. We're really we're gonna looking at it, and we want to hire people to do that, right? And um, and yeah, so so that's basically that's basically what we want to do. Um, so to summarize to summarize a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry, to summarize a little bit, I think uh, a quick summary is since I I left my job to dedicate full time on on async KPI, what has happened is that um, uh, we onboarded uh, Lucas. Uh, luckily, <laughs> we onboarded uh, Eva, my wife, and she's now working in her own company, non tech related, and she's super happy. She's, she's done, she doesn't have to do stuff she doesn't understand. Uh, so, so yeah, and uh, and now uh, we want and uh, we have this partnership with Postman, right? Uh, which is um, allowing us to do much more, and we want to take the opportunity now to grow from here, and we want to have the opportunity now to talk to the community, you, right? And and tell us like, what do you think about it? Um, how do you see it? What's your biggest uh, concern with this? Uh, and and yeah, so 
I'm happy to to answer any questions that you might have now in the chat. Uh, I'm sure we still have time. Yeah, it's 35 minutes. So uh, yes. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. We have we have time. We have uh, precisely 15 minutes to yeah. uh, for Q and A. Thank you very much for your presentation and the clarification Thank about you. what is happening uh, between async API, Postman API. So I think that everybody will be relieved to see that async API will stay uh, vendor neutral and it's really that, uh, what you want and Postman will help you actually to, to achieve that. Uh, we have... Um, a uh, great discussion in the uh, chat uh, window uh, of this stage. Uh, there was a, a good question about uh, cloud events versus, mm. I think, API. And uh, um, Jonas uh, pointed to a, a post that you, you, you wrote last year about that. But can, can you explain for people who are not aware about what is cloud events and how it relates or not? Yeah. And uh, if it replaces async API. Yeah. Um, well, for sure, it doesn't replace async API, and we've had this conversation a lot of times. And I, I even wrote the blog post, as you said, right? Uh, it's complementary, and I think both have to coexist. And please, um, they both have to exist. And, and what I'm saying here is that um, to, wait, to summarize it a little bit is uh, we are async API is focused on 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 how the application is, or how to connect to a specific uh, um, um, specific uh, application, right? So, so how do you reach a, bro a broker? Uh, how do you publish messages, subscribe to messages, right? And, and all this stuff. How do you discover the channels, which channels are available and all this stuff. Uh, and cloud events is more about the message itself, right? Which is super important. Right. Uh, what they do is is a um, and we don't have to forget uh, the origins of cloud events. Cloud events was born out of the uh, serverless uh, working group on CNCF, and uh, and the reason is that uh, it was it it is a a, a as it called an envelope. It's an envelope for for your message, right? So you can always expect that at least the envelope is the same. And contains crucial information for your business, for your applications, uh, and and you can parse it uh, correctly. Um, so they both have to play together. Uh, like I said, in these two weeks periods that we dedicate to contribute to uh, to other open source projects, uh, we'll also contribute as much as possible to to cloud events. We need them to exist, and uh, and I think it it will be great to 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 see both projects uh, continuing. Just let me, because I, I get this this question very often. Uh, <laughs> let me just uh, clarify one point: is that the reason we're doing this is for the success of even driven architectures, uh, or to have the same kind of tooling, let's say, or or uh, or they are as mature as REST APIs, right? That's what we want to achieve uh, in the long term, right? So it will be stupid from our side to be blocking other people. Even if an alternative to async KPI appears tomorrow, we'll be happy to collaborate. We'll be happy. Uh, I mean, obviously, we think that if we all put the effort and uh, 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 the same effort into a single, uh, a single uh, spec or initiative, that will be great. But sometimes we know from experiences that this is not possible, and sometimes it's not the best. Uh, it depends on how the community is managed and all this stuff, right? So, so yeah, if another uh, initiative appears, welcome. I mean, let's work together. Let's make this spread as fast as possible so people have a more diverse toolbox for their APIs, right? Uh, if it were to make money or to or to have like a spotlight attention or something like that, we will probably have founded a, a company and not come up with this partnership with Postman or something else, right? Or, or sponsors. It will have been easier, trust me, <laughs> to get and knock some some, uh, some uh, investors' doors and, and ask for money. That would be much easier. Uh, and then we could even uh, stop producing this open source content and do something uh, privately, right? But that's not our purpose here. So that's... Uh, 
So basically what we should retain is that cloud events is for now just a way to describe messages uh, with your async API. So there is nothing and even you, sh you should definitely use the async API to describe your async API, even if it's yeah. used uh, cloud events format. Uh, I come from the financial industry and we also have regular format like the ISO 20022, which just describes data formats to yeah. make companies uh, speak the same language. But each one then build its own APIs and can use its own description format. Um, another question regarding the Sync API and the uh, Postman uh, team, I'm just trying to find it again. It was about, uh, should we now expect uh, Postman tools and not only uh, async API uh, tools coming from the foundation? Do you have news about that? No, so so coming from the foundation, definitely no. Uh, so we we remain independent here. That's the deal with them, right? So mm -hmm. in my case, so just so people understand a little bit better, um, Lucas, Jonas, Matchek, and everybody joining from now on, there they will be employees of Postman, but they will, all the work they produce is going to be for Async KPI, mm -hmm. and it's going to be driven by their by their Async API roadmap, right? It's not going to be driven by um, Postman's roadmap, right? Only myself, I'll be like a double agent here. Like I'll be helping Postman uh, to implement support for Async API and for even driven architectures. That's the only thing. Um, and, and, and and I think it's it's actually good. So you will see, you will see an improvement on Postman tools regarding this, regarding support for, for Async API. But you still don't see async API producing stuff for Postman, right? That's not the way it works. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. So basically, Postman will create async API related tools, or will add features to its existing tools, but it will stay separate from the foundation. Yeah. Um, right. Just checking new questions. Uh, oh, question from David Biesak. Open API initiative technical steering committee back away from semantic versioning. Fran, do you think semantic versioning is useful for specification versioning? <laughs> it is. It is. It, a lot, I mean, we're unless unless we commit a mistake, we don't want to break this. We don't want to break uh, semantic versioning. Even I mean. One of the reasons, and I can I can understand the OpenAPI folks why they did it, uh, and I probably will have chosen the same path. Uh, but um, I think precisely, be, uh, or, or the reason they did it, it's precisely because they don't ship very often. They don't release very often, and when there is a new version, there's this there's this fear of oh man, it's a new major version. People haven't uh, adopted three yet. How are we gonna get four out of the, uh, out of the door? Uh, uh, you get, I mean, you get the fear that nobody's gonna uh, adopt it, uh, or people are gonna complain. Like I don't know, like uh, you're, um, I don't know. Yeah, you're just releasing a new major version for just one small change, right? Uh, which is actually not related to OpenAPI, but to JSON schema. But but yeah, um, I so I can relate, right? And that's why we want to be delivering faster, mm -hmm. right? So we actually have to do the opposite. Uh, if you want to break this fear, you have to be like delivering, like I said, for instance, every six months you have a new version. And who knows, maybe next year uh, or in two years, we are we are talking about async KPI 8. We don't know. But that shouldn't be a problem because the tool you're going to use should be working with all the previous versions as well. Right, that's why we we want to maintain the tooling, and that's something that OpenAPI cannot do so far, uh, because they don't maintain any core tooling, any official tooling. Let's say so, yeah. So you you have to you have to wait for vendors to update their tooling, and that's not gonna happen uh, quickly because uh, unless there is a huge uh, business wing there, right? Like to do it. So so yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's my, my point of view. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. We'll 
but there is no silver bullet for any problem oh, you have to take no, take step. we'll see but uh what i will return here is that maybe uh raising more often can be a good way to handle that problem uh a question from philip hammerstad do you have any good suggestions on tooling for designing APIs with async API specification? Um, good question. So for designing, we actually have uh, don't have much. Uh, everything you have to do is probably mostly by hand, like typing the, the, mm. the async API document. That's why we want to invest there. Uh, this will be the case. Like nobody should be creating a PDF document by encoding the document manually right mm -hmm. yeah so that's the same thing you don't want to encode your your event driven architecture <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a strange format so uh but you have some vendors doing some good job here so for instance solas has is the, their event portal and uh and they're exporting from their event portal they they export to uh to async api yeah so that's yeah, we, we definitely need, and I, I'm sad because every year I said I say that we need more user-friendly tools to avoid having yes. people to actually write open API, async API, or whatever. Yeah. Actually, people, most people don't want to to write that. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Just checking for new questions. Yeah. Yes. Just to comment on Philip, uh, new comment now. Uh, I agree with him. Like most people are using Swagger Hub, Stoplight, or or the like, and I think uh, the I take the opportunity from here to to um, to make a call here to yeah. to Smart Bear and to Stoplight to collaborate on yeah. on better tooling for async API. Uh, so yeah, I yeah. I have no interest. I have zero interest on competing with mm -hmm. anyone. Right. So if we can if we can build the if we can build the components to make uh, the whole the whole uh, environment successful welcome yeah yeah and especially last remark from philip uh we said it is like the tools that are not tied to a gateway or a hub i totally agree uh but i don't know if yeah. it, uh yeah. if it's viable from an economic point of view but uh it's really good to have uh, tools which can be used independently. Uh, so if you want to talk to uh, to Stoplight, maybe you can jump to Phil Sturgeon talk, which happened at 4.45. <laughs> it will not it will talk about sustainable APIs, but it's a good time to talk about that. Uh, we have two minutes left. Um, maybe just for the two minutes left, can you remind us why why did you start all that? How how did you came <laughs> for to to create the async API and uh, it's actually minutes. it was actually because I love Open API and um, I, I still love it. I, I, whenever I have to create an, an API, which is not very frequently now, but uh, I, I start with Open API and. Um, and uh, we were working at Hitch at the API change log at the time, and we had an event-driven architecture, and we were offering a product on top of uh, of Open API to our customers, and we were encouraging our customers to do the same, and uh, we couldn't do the same thing because we were using event-driven architecture with RabbitMQ, AMQP protocol, right? So we couldn't have this kind of tools like generating docs, generating code, and all this stuff, and it was like no way this will be a way for that and after asking lots of time on the opening not lots lots of time sorry after asking and looking at lot lots of people asking for that a few times uh i realized that open a open api didn't want to go that path which i completely understand <laughs> and uh and yeah so i decided like okay let's just as a side project i i never thought it was going to be that way I thought it was going to die on my GitHub and nobody will care. <laughs> <laughs> and <No>. here we are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's a good story because it's basically there was a problem to solve. There was no solution, only trying to 
transform something that was not meant to do that. So yeah. let's, let's create something new and it yeah. works. Uh, thank you very much, Fran. We are at the end thank of this, uh, this talk. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I hope that the new partnership with Postman will bring all you need to a uh, few via Syncopy initiative. Uh, we say to all vendors, uh, use use this format, uh, create anything that you can to help people using this format because we need standards between tools. Uh, we definitely need standards. Yeah. Thank you very much, Fran. Thank you. Man.